John chapter 8, verse 12. Anybody want to read it? 12. 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. Amen. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the beacon, the lighthouse on the hill for each and every one of us. Dear Lord, no matter what storm is brewing or what darkness lies over the seas ahead, dear Lord, you are shining bright through and through in the guiding light for each and every one of us. Thank you, God, for that lighthouse. In your loving name I pray. Amen. Okay, You can play for a few minutes until you feel like it's a good time to get up. Or you can say that all the time. I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Just don't quit yet. Get ready for you to quit. John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So, this afternoon I was sitting in the conference room at work, and I was on the opposite end of the counter. The counter is way down there, like towards the door. Half the distance, but it is like at least 15, 20 feet away. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, God, you know, a pretty good time for a message now that it's three. <laughs> We're running out of time. And then the Spirit of the Lord just, just got my attention on a flower pot that was sitting there. It had an assortment of flowers, but it had a few uh, particular flowers in that pot and there were sunflowers and the Lord got my attention I was thinking yeah God's got something to say here because I realized at that moment for the last two to three weeks like every day all of the time everywhere that I go Facebook posts YouTube videos uh, just people talking about it, uh, random articles that I read, just sunflowers continue to show up. And I'm like, what are you trying to show me? What is going on? <laughs> but when I saw the sunflowers sitting there, I thought, man, this is ludicrous. They just keep showing up everywhere. And the Lord's wanting to say something. So I began talking to the Lord about sunflowers. Um, and again, I found it odd enough already that they had been popping up in my mind and in, in front of me and on the internet and wherever else over and over again. So I began to discuss with God what it is that he was wanting to say. Um, today, it was maybe 30 minutes after that. It was probably 3.30 or so. I went to Kingsport on my way back here. Uh, on my way back to Bristol and when I got to Kingsport I was looking for an address I had a few pieces of roofing material that were commercial roofing accessories and the address that Google brought me to was in a neighborhood I thought well this is strike one two and three there might need termination bar in a neighborhood um, and I couldn't find the address it seemingly skipped the number that I needed and I thought it maybe is that house but it just doesn't make sense so I went around the corner. I went up the road and I saw some shade. So I pulled over and uh, I was sitting there talking to the Lord and I was thinking about the message. I was thinking on the things pertaining to the message uh, and just, just taking a break. I thought, I'll find a house in a minute. So I stopped. And as I'm thinking about these, this idea of the sunflower, not having really, really in any real direction what God was wanting to show me, I look over and about 50 feet away. <laughs> And I'm like, there's sunflowers. <laughs> there's more sunflowers in these people's yard. Right here in the front yard. I thought, man, it's crazy. So I left, went down the road, turned Google, the maps back on to figure out where I was going. Sure enough, it brought me to the house that I thought it might be. I thought, whatever, I'm pulling in. When I pulled in, I noticed there was roofers around back. They had an area of flat roof, which... Uh, which is why they needed commercial roofing stuff. So I thought, well, this is the place. Um, when I pulled in, I took the termination bar to the roofer. I snuck out, 
I didn't even tell them I dropped it off. I just put it where they'd see it because I figured, no, no doubt, if I tell them I'm here, they're going to want something else. And I'm not going back. I'm going home. <laughs> so I dropped it off. I got back in the car. And when I got in the car, I was sitting there and I was fixing to put in maps so I could get the fastest route back to Bristol from Kingsport. And I looked to my left. <laughs> and there's a flag on the porch two houses down. It's a sunflower flag. And then right there in the yard's more sunflowers. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> And I'm all the way back thinking about it and talking to the Lord about it. And God showed me some things. And at that point, I definitely knew that God had been trying to speak something to me over the last few weeks. And I just had missed it. And I found it peculiar, but I just didn't really give it any attention. And tonight, I want to share with you some thoughts that I find significant in respect to this plant. And then we'll get to the heartbeat of what it is that I believe God was wanting to show me. You don't have to sit there long. I might get long-winded to come think of it. Um, but I want to show you some things that I found out about the plants. I began to look up some things and learn some things. And then I'm going to share with you what it is that I believe God wanted me to get from the very beginning. And we're going to talk about that tonight. This may be brief, but I just ask that you listen closely and consider what it is that I'm fixing to tell you. Now... No, don't be going to the bathroom. I'm not. I know you do. Don't be texting everybody either. I'm not. <laughs> George is going to hold you accountable. He's watching. Growth war. Norma's going to hold you accountable. She's watching. <laughs> so most people believe that the sunflower follows the sun, but that's simply not entirely true. Do a little research. You'll see that there's a little more to it than that. Um, the sunflower doesn't actually follow the sun from the morning till night like you've probably heard. That's what I figured. It just it tracked the sun and that's it. It does, but it's not that basic. What it does is it, uh, leave, it, it's, it sets its leaves to receive the sun in the east and then only partially tracks the sun overhead thereafter. I need y'all to listen to what I'm telling you. The sunflower as the day progresses, is always looking for the direction of the sun in order to fully observe it, its, its rays. Do you hear me? The sunflower is always looking for the direction of the sun in order to fully absorb its rays. Now, what did Jesus say in our verse? He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I want to speak plainly to you right now. We should always spend our lives each and every day following the direction of the Son of God. I said we should always live our lives from the time we get up to the time we lay down, following suit after the sunflower, and I'm going to give you some more, following the direction of the Son of God. I said, as the sunflower tracks the sun, you and I have the same responsibility as the people of God to track the light of the world, the Son of God, to keep our eyes on Him, to follow Him day and night, to track Him at all times. Do you understand? In John chapter 9 verse 5. It says as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. It said as long as I am in the world. I am the light of the world. Psalm chapter 27 verse 1 says. The Lord is my light and salvation. Well who is Jesus? Who does John say Jesus is in John chapter 1? John says he's the word. He is who is God. That the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That he is God. So what's it say in Psalm chapter 68 verse 1? It says let God arise. So in other words he is the light. He is the light of our salvation. He is the light of the world. The psalmist says let God who is the light arise. And I'm going to tell you right now folks that when you get up in the morning your thoughts ought to be of the risen Lord. I said as your day continues your thoughts should follow the risen Lord. Yes that's 101 Christianity but I'm going to remind you before I go any further when you get up in the morning your thoughts 
and your actions to follow after the risen light of the world, the Lord God Almighty. That's what you should be doing as the sunflower would. So I did a little research. And I found that a, that a, um, I found that the sunflower, just like every living thing, has a life cycle. It has a life cycle, obviously. You and I have a life cycle. And I want to touch on some of those points to give you some things to see here because I'm telling you, God's been showing me the sunflower for weeks and I've been missing it. And I believe this afternoon he got my attention enough because now is the appointed time to speak this message. So the sunflower has a beginning stage of growth. Listen very closely to what I'm telling you. It has a beginning stage of growth. Obviously, like any plant, it'll grow to a certain stature. In its youth, in its younger stages of growth, it is not what it will soon be. The younger that plant is, the more it follows the sun, the more it tracks the sun, the more it's dependent upon that sun to nourish it, the more it needs that sun, the more totally uh, dependent upon the sun that plant is in its beginning stages. Now, when it gets the full bloom, it thinks that that's the best stage that it can be in. When it's full bloom, most people think that this is the best stage that that plant can be in. And I'm going to tell you again, in full bloom, even then, that plant begins to track the sun. Day in, day out, it will track the sun, starting in the east to the west. It will follow the sun every day. It will not miss a beat. But even in full bloom, it has the understanding, or at least thinks, that that's the best state that it can be in at its, in its life cycle. And I would suggest otherwise. There comes a point in time in which the sunflower begin, it will begin to wilt. It will begin to lose strength. It will begin to not be able to track the sun like it once did. You'll see when a sunflower gets old, it's still planted, it's still firm, but it does not follow the sun as it once did. It does not track the sun like it did in its youth when it was in full bloom. But it does have a purpose even when it's wilting that's far greater than what it was when it was in full bloom. Some of y'all folks need to listen right now. When a sunflower begins to wilt, it does one of two things. It either hangs its head toward the ground or remains stuck in its stature. It does not shift and follow the sun. It continually faces the east at all times. It continually faces the east or it bows its head to the ground. It does one or the other. Now I'm going to read to you Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 and 2 real quick, and then I'll speak. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. The prophet Habakkuk says, his radiance is like the sunlight, his rays are coming out of his hand. Revelation chapter 1, 16 says, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun which shineth in its strength. Now remember, listen, the sunflower doesn't actually follow the sun from morning until night like most folks have thought that it did. It will not track it from the east all the way to the west. It will track it to some extent. It will follow it to some extent. But it's probably different than what you've imagined or heard. Now take you somewhere. What it does, and I'm going to tell you again, is it sets its leaves to receive the sun in the east and then only partially tracks the sun overhead thereafter. Now notice what else it does. It says that as the sun begins to set, the sunflower immediately begins to reposition itself toward the east. Now, I find it fascinating if you look at a sunflower right now that it looks an awful lot like the human eye. If you look at it, it looks like a pupil with the iris and all of that. It looks like the human eye. I don't think that's by coincidence. 
Now, I also find it fascinating that the sun begins to arise when it begins to rise in the morning, that the sunflower has sense enough to already be in position to look up and lift up his eyes. I said, the sunflower already has sense enough to know that when the sun went down to get into position and to be ready for the coming of the sun, because when that sun comes back, that sunflower begins to lift its head. It begins to look for the sun. It's already in position. Waiting for the sun to return. Matthew 24, 27. I'm going to keep this brief because I feel like what we need to do is I give you this word, we celebrate, and we do a couple more worship songs. That's just what we're going to do. So I'm not going to bind you very long to this message, but I'm going to give you a few thoughts and a very basic. Matthew 24, 27 says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew chapter 28, 5 and 6 says, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Amen. Now, in both verses, Jesus was not found where the sun sets. He was found where the sun rises. And the sunflower knows that the sun comes from the very place that it will return to. I said the sunflower knows that the sun comes to the very place that it will return to. It left where it's going to come back from. The angel spoke to the people of God saying, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. I said the sunflower knows and it prepares during the night to receive the sun when it comes back. And I want to tell you now that as the church, right now, during the day, we ought to be tracking the sun with our thoughts and our mind on the sun. And when that sun goes down and night comes, we ought to be in position, getting ready for the sun to come back. The Bible says that the hour doth come in which there shall no man be able to work when the night comes. And the night is upon you right now. And I'm telling you, the Bible exhorts us, just like a sunflower, to get into position right now, begin to face the east, and get ready to look up and lift up your eyes, because the Son of Righteousness is coming back into the earth with healing in his wings for a sunflower church that's made herself ready. The secular New York Times. I want to read to you what they said. They said, At night, in its absence, speaking of the sun, the sunflowers face east again, anticipating the sun's return. That's what the New York Times says about a sunflower. At night, in its absence, the sunflowers face the east again, anticipating the sun's return. Amen. It goes on to say, they do this until they get old, at which point they stop moving. Then, after they've aged, the flower always faces east. So, let me give you some thoughts. This will benefit the young, it will benefit the old. Young flowers track the sun. When they're in full bloom, they go from the east nearly all the way to the west, tracking the sun throughout the day. They keep their eyes on the sun. They're nourished of their sun. They're nourished, they receive of the sun. They depend upon the sun. They've got their eyes on the sun. They're following the sun. They stay locked in to the sun from the very moment the sun rises until the very moment the sun goes down. They track the sun. That's the young flower. Now, the mature flowers, and I ask that you hear me, especially if you're already old. Some of you are not old yet, but you will be, so you still need to hear me. Mature flowers continually face east, just like I told you, or they hang their heads toward the ground. Let me speak to you in plain Bible. Young folks, 
If you consider yourself young, get your eyes on Jesus. Follow him and do what he does. Track him night and day. From the very moment you get up to the moment you lay down, let him be your nourishment. Keep your eyes on the Lord. If he moves, you move. If he goes, you go. You keep your eyes on him and go where he goes. There's no plan B. You track him the very moment he rises and the very moment he moves. You track the sun from beginning to end. That's your responsibility. That's your responsibility. Now, older folks, I want you to hear what I'm fixing to tell you. You might not be able to physically follow Jesus and do the things of the ministry like you once did, but you can certainly do this. You can watch. You can keep your eyes squarely on the east at all times like a mature sunflower, watching for the signs of the coming of the sun, keeping your eyes on the hills from where your help comes from, watching so you can warn the younger sunflowers, watching so you can warn the other generations, watching continually. If you can't keep your eyes east, then you better bow your head to the ground and begin to intercede for everybody else and begin to pray for those that are pursuing the Lord and begin to pray for those that are doing the ministry and going out on the streets. If nothing else, you watch and you bow your head and you watch and pray for the Lord to come. You still got a job to do. You say, I'm too old to go on the streets. I can't go out and do the miracles. I can't go out and preach and walk four miles. Maybe not, but you can watch for the Lord to come. And you can be a watchman on the wall. And you can bow your face to the ground in intercession and be an interceding prayer warrior for the church in the final hours. And one more thing. The old flower has more seeds than any other flower. And it's the very flower that is used by insects to pollinate the younger flowers. You have a responsibility right now to be planted. You don't have to go where Jesus goes and do what Jesus does necessarily. What I mean by that is he's not looking for you to be on the streets when you're 80, laying hands on the sick and walking 10 miles. If you can't do it, that's fine. But he is looking for you to plant your roots firm in the love of God. Begin to look and to watch and to wait and to keep an eye out for the church that is young and out doing those things. And to be those that bow your heads to the ground and pray. And to be like an older flower that can pollinate these younger flowers. That can be the source of sustenance. That you can be there in position praying and watching and feeding the younger ones. Your job ain't over. And it's not only not over. It's more important now that you're old. Some of you tap out and throw in the towel because you say I'm retired. I'm too old to do this and that. And I'm going to tell you just like the sunflower. This is the very day that you were raised up for. God was waiting on you to get done with this, that, and the other. Now your responsibility is to pray and to seek the Lord and to watch and to pollinate the younger ones and to be in position to do your job. The younger folks got the legwork to do. It is your responsibility. Jesus moves, you move. He turns, you turn. He jumps, you jump. He squats, you squat. You do exactly what he does. If it's hard, it don't matter. Your life is not your own. You're bought with a price. Glorify God in your body. Follow him where he goes. Track him day and night. It doesn't matter where he goes. If he goes somewhere you don't want to go, it's not your choice. You track him. That's why you were formed, was to be consumed by the very sun. Old folks, we know you can't track the sun. You can't run here and there and everywhere and go up and down far and wide anymore. But you can, and you know as good as I do, be watching the signs. Be watching what's going on. Be interceding with your head bowed to the ground. Be somebody that's praying continually before the Lord. And furthermore, pollinate the rest of the body for the glory of God. Amen. If you're missing that, you're missing your calling. And that works on the young and the old. You've got a responsibility. And right now, I'm telling you, just like the sunflower, there's coming a time in which the Son of Righteousness will arise one more time. And he's going to come into the earth and with a shout and the voice of an archangel. You're going to see Jesus coming again. And when he does, you better lift up your eyes like unto a sunflower and cry unto the Lord God Almighty. Blessed be the name. He's coming unto you and he's going to bring you unto himself. But right now, in order to be ready, you're called into a position. Amen. Isaiah 60. We'll start at verse 1. 
I'm probably going to quit if I get that. So may as well go ahead and play some black grass. This isn't meant to be deep. Just go ahead and play. This ain't meant to be deep. It's simple. You got a young flower, you got an old flower. Both of them have a job to do in respect to the sun. Both of them are in response to the sun. Both of them are because of the sun. Both of them are nothing without the sun. Both of them die apart from the sun. But both of them can bring him glory when they obey the sun. Isaiah 60, 1 through 4 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Malachi 4, I'm going to read to you the first two verses. It says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Listen very closely, because that day cometh. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the sunflower does not question whether or not the sun is coming back. I said the sunflower doesn't wonder, it doesn't question, it's not unsure as to whether or not the sun is coming back. What that sunflower did was it saw the sun go away, so it got into position and said, even so come, yes Lord, even so come. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus is coming quickly, and he's coming for a bride that's made herself ready. And I want to warn you as the church, be like unto the sunflower, get into position, do what God's called you to do, because he's coming. I believe that the Lord's been trying to tell me for weeks, or at least show me through an analogy, that the sun's coming. Amen. Get into position. Tell the people, get into position. Tell the people, get ready. Tell them it's time to quit hanging their heads all the time and to look up and lift up their eyes because their redemption draws nigh. You tell them in the meantime, day and night to track and to follow me to keep their eyes on me you tell them right now just like the sunflower don't miss a beat they cannot afford to be playing adultery with the world they cannot afford to be fornicating with the world they have got to be like the sunflower day and night following the sun with their eyes on the sun tracking the sun from the east to the west as the sun light and shineth out of the east and shineth even unto the west so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You tell my people to watch and be ready. You tell those young folks to go out and do what I do, to follow me and to minister the gospel and to warn this world that I'm coming. And you tell those old folks to be praying, to be on their face praying, and to be watching for the signs of my coming because I'm coming for a church that's made themselves ready, spot-free, blemish-free, wrinkle-free. That simple. Just worship. Play something off the chain. What do y'all say we stand? Let's praise the Lord right now. Let's praise the Lord like we mean it. This altar is going to be open. You are welcome to pray while we worship. If you need healing or anything of the sorts, bring it on while we worship. But what we're going to do to close this thing out tonight is praise the Lord and worship Him and glorify Him because He's good and He really is coming. And I want to be like up to a sunflower that's already looking up and waiting and watching for the coming of the sun because I know He's coming quickly and His reward is with Him and I want to be one that's ready. Come on, let's praise Him.